Alright, welcome to the stream guys. We will get started in a few minutes once a few more people have jumped into the stream. Um, before we get started, I'll just do a quick rundown of what we'll be going through. Uh, we want to go through Game Fruit's Crossy Road tutorials, which cover a whole bunch of coding concepts from New Zealand's Digital Technologies Curriculum and also um, computational thinking concepts from probably pretty much every educational curriculum. They're pretty foundational principles. So um, in GameFruit, GameFruit.com, if you want to get a head start, you want to make an account or sign into your account. Um, and when you get into GameFruit, you want to go new blank game and then tutorials. And in our tutorials, we are going into the Crossy Road set of tutorials. And you can see there's that little Crossy Road chicken there and starter projects. So tutorials, starter projects. Okay. And in here, we want to go and open up coding with Crossy. Oh, look, I haven't even, uh, I haven't hidden the image. Okay, I'll, I'll just do that again real quick so you could see <laughs> what I was showing you. So we're going to Game Fruit. And you want to, at gamefruit.com, make sure you've got an account signed in or created. And we want to make a new blank game. And from there, you want to click on Tutorials, then Starter Projects. And we are going through coding with Crossy down there. Five courses based on the on uh, computational thinking concepts. Okay, and here we can see all five. So we'll go through these when I start the stream. We'll go through all five of these. Um, our stream will probably last about 45 minutes. So we, if we got five of these, we need to kind of have under 10 minutes on each one. Um, so I might skip some parts. There's a little bit of repetition in here. Repetition helps with learning, um, which is really good, but I'm just going to cover the important stuff out of all of these. Um, and if I click on one of them, like the first one here, algorithms and sequencing, this covers, um, analyzing problems, breaking them down into a sequence of steps, and then building an algorithm out of those instructions, executing it. And then we'll also talk a little bit about debugging. I won't cover the debugging part too much. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, before we start the stream, I'll just give you a quick overview of what this looks like. So it'll load up a, a template game here. So the game is already built. We just need to go tweak some of the code. That will load in. And the idea is we want to program our chicken for each of these tutorials, for each five, we're covering different concepts. And in this one, we're covering algorithms. So that means what kind of steps do you have to take to achieve your goal? Um, and, and what's the procedure that's going to work? And so in this one, we want to get the chicken to the coin. And the chicken has a certain amount of steps that it's got to go through. Um, and each level, it gets progressively harder and harder to get to the coin. There's more obstacles, things in the way. You've got to go left, go right, go up, go down, wait for cars. Um, just like in the real Crossy Road game, we've partnered with um, Hipster Whale, the developers of Crossy Road, and they gave us their blessing to create this set of tutorials. Um, okay, so that's just a quick rundown of what we'll be going through in the stream. Let's see if we've got more people in the stream. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let's jump into it. Okay. So remember, you want to go to gamefruit.com to follow along with this. Gamefruit.com. And make sure you've got an account. If you don't have an account, you can just log out uh well i'll log out i was logged in um, you can click login to log in or create an account 
Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Welcome to Game Fruits Code Talk, a live digital technology stream on how to code real video games powered by real game developers. I'm Dave and I'm your host. Today we're going to talk about Crossy Road. Um, we're going to talk about going through Game Fruits five Crossy Road themed tutorials. We're going to be learning some important computational thinking concepts from the digital technologies curriculum to solve problems for our chicken and our crossy road game the chicken's got places to be doesn't want to get run over by cars it wants to get as many coins as possible um, so there's all kinds of different ways we can solve that problem of getting our chicken to reach its goal um, so we're going to go through game fruits coding with crossy tutorials um, okay so let's have a look at them so remember that's gamefruits.com and oh i need to be logged in so i'm going to click log in i've already got an account you could log in with google that would work fine okay so we're in game fruit now we are going to start making and coding with crossy uh, to get to that you'll want to create a new blank game up here start new blank game and then click on tutorials that opens up the tutorial side by here and in here we want to click starter projects to open up game fruits starter tutorials and down the bottom there we've got coding with crossy okay now these five tutorials we're going to go through these we'll do a bit of a brief overview we won't cover all the material in them um, we've got algorithms and sequencing um, that's uh, we'll create a uh, programming with a sequence of instructions um, inputs and outputs we will use um, human inputs into a computer program so pressing arrow keys and clicking um, ways that we can control the computer and then we'll use those inputs to create outputs and those will be movements in the game and um, other kinds of outcomes in the game um, loops and iteration that's where we have an instruction and then we repeat it a certain amount of times um, depending on what we want to do so if, for example in this game um, the chicken might want to move forwards five times instead of telling it to move forwards five times we could say repeat for five times move forwards can be quite helpful um, then we'll cover selection and if statements. So if a condition is true, then do this thing. For example, in coding with Crossy, if a coin is in front of my chicken, I want the chicken to move forwards. Um, if there is a car in front of my chicken, I want the chicken to wait for the, for the car to go so that I don't get run over. Um, and finally, comparative operators. That means comparing things. So comparing numbers. We can use this to um, figure out if we've got enough coins to win the game. A comparative operator example would be if a number equals another number. So if the amount of coins equals 10, we could win the game. So that's a brief overview of the concepts we'll cover. Let's dive straight in to the first one, algorithms and sequencing. So in here, we want to use code blocks to program a sequence of instructions. And we want to move our chicken around and achieve its goals. So let's get started. Okay. That's loading in. Okay, this is our first level. Chicken here, coin there. We want to get our chicken to the coin. Uh, we need to create a very basic algorithm here. So I'm going to edit the script on our chicken. If we right click on our chicken and select edit script. Now, here's where we can program some stuff. Um, we want our chicken to start moving when the level starts. The block for that is from events. Events when the level starts because the level starting is an event that we can detect. When the level starts, what do we want to do? We want the chicken to move forwards. And the way that we're going to do that is 
by getting the chicken to send a message to broadcast a message out to the game and then the game will pick that up and and realize oh chicken wants to do this let's do it so from events our messaging blocks are down uh, near the bottom we want broadcast message let's grab that and drag that into when the level starts so it connects broadcast message uh, our chicken can go four directions up left right and down we want our chicken to go up because the coin is forwards so let's broadcast up up all lowercase uh, then let's play the game see what happens hopefully the chicken will move up so we want to pick level one and see what our chicken does and there we go chicken hopped one step up perfect then we got our little gift very nice and it's going to give us a reward good job okay next step adding a sequence of moves um so in this step we basically if we uh, close our script here we can see in level two step two correlates with level two all of the steps and levels correlate with each other um, so we can see the chicken has to go one two three four up and one two left that's pretty basic you want to create some code like um like this so if we right click on our chicken and edit that um, we want to say when the level starts and then from events again down under message sending we want broadcast message um, so how many ups is that let me close that script and save it one two three four up and two to the left okay so that's going to be broadcast message up I'm going to duplicate this block to get four copies that's just by right clicking and duplicating and then after it goes up 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 four times the fifth move i want to be go left we'll cast left and then left once more up 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 left left okay let's test that out level two up 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 left left very good four ups two lifts so you can tell at this point that the idea of um, getting the chicken to move around relies on when the level starts and then broadcasting a sequence of movements so let's see what level three looks like level three introduces waiting for a car so we'll go to level three now and i can see there's a road here there's actually a car sneakily waiting to to go past hopefully it doesn't hit us if we play the game and have a look at level three we can see there's that car so what we need to do is edit our chicken on level three and follow that kind of code um, now because a lot of this is pretty basic i'm going to do it I'm going to th go through it quite quickly um, so that you don't have to see the same concepts repeated multiple times. Level three. Here we go. Chicken waited and then it moved up, up. So very good. So that was saying wait. And then how many more steps do we have for this first one? We have step four, step five, step six, step seven and step eight so we got up to step four um, this is dealing with basically in this step we have a truck and a car um, and you'll want to try and get a sequence of steps that avoids the car and avoids the truck and gets you to the coin using up down left right and wait um, so i'll leave that one up to you perhaps at a later time to go through because I want to give you a brief overview of what's involved in all of these. Um, and the rest of uh, the Crossy Road algorithms um, steps here are quite similar. Up, down, left, right, and wait. And those are being triggered when the level starts. Now, the cool thing in here on level 7 is that... The code here has already been written, but a 
it's a bit messed up. You can go up, right, 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 and then blank. Well, that won't do anything. Up, 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 up. So if you play that and pick level 7, you'll see how the chicken is behaving not quite right. So we need to debug it. So let's see what the chicken does. Uh-oh. That's no good. So you'll need to go and edit these blocks and change the sequence. Perhaps that one is left. Perhaps that one is weight. Um, you need to go and experiment with these to figure that out. Um, and then on step eight, the last step, um, it's essentially another puzzle for you to solve. This time, the chicken has to avoid jumping in the river, um, get across lily pads and logs, avoid falling in the river yet again, um, navigate around some rocks, dodge some, uh, dodge a car, and then collect the coin. So that's using when level starts, broadcast right, up, left, and down, and wait. So those are the, um, the steps that you can build a sequence of instructions out of to create your algorithm. And that's essentially what an algorithm is. A series of steps to solve a problem. So good. That is an overview of our first Crossy Road tutorial. Now, the next one, inputs and outputs. Let's click on that and open that one up. Inputs and outputs. Um, so computer programs need inputs, um, things to tell them that something is happening ways to control them, and then outputs, ways to get information from the program. So for example, uh, when I click on this let's go button, the input is me clicking, and the output is um, the game fruit site opening up the tutorial that I want. Let's see that if I click let's go, that should do it. I'll, I'll just talk about the uh, learning outcomes. So we'll be making a basic program using inputs and outputs, thinking algorithmically, sequencing our instructions correctly and we'll cover a little bit of debugging as well so let's jump into that okay that'll just load up okay so this tutorial has step three step four step five, six, seven, eight, and nine is a bit of a recap. So eight main steps, eight puzzles for us to solve. What's the first one? Coding keyboard inputs to move our chicken. So if we play our game right now with level one, and press the left, right, up, down keys, we can see our chicken does not move. So that's no good. We want it to move. The way that we're going to get this working is by coding our chicken to move when we press the arrow keys. So let's right click on our chicken and edit that script. Now the chicken starts with this, these two blocks. When it's created, it gets a chicken tag on itself. That's just so the game knows that this is the chicken. Um, then what we want to do is detect when we press a key, our input. So if we go to events and under keyboard, we want when backspace delete is pressed. We'll drag that block out. When backspace delete is pressed. We want this to be right arrow. When right arrow is pressed, what do we want to do? We want to move a step. So let's go to uh, scratch blocks up here. We have a bunch of blocks that are similar to the scratch ones. We want this move 10 steps block. Let's change that 10 to 1. We only want to go one step. Um, and let's play the game now. Each time we press the right arrow key, we should move one step. So that's on level one. There we go. I hit the arrow key twice and it moved me one step. So that's good. So that's how uh, our inputs work. I'm going to skip ahead. Oh, that's actually an important um, image there from level two showing the directions that the chicken can move. To, to go up, we want to turn and face the chicken 270 degrees or negative 90 degrees. 
um, to the right will be 0, down will be 90, left will be 180. And why are we mentioning that? Well, we can change the direction that the chicken is pointing in so that they will face the right way and then move forwards. So if we skip to step 4 and have a look at the code on our chicken in step 4, we can see in this step we want to use WASD instead of just the arrow keys. So WASD is a pretty popular uh, movement control scheme. So let's grab this when W is pressed block, duplicate it. We want four copies. That's just right click duplicate. Now W and then A and then S and then D. WASD, good for our different directions. Now we need to go to scratch blocks and get turn a uh, point in direction is the block we want. Point in direction. If we click on that 90 there, we can see up is this red line facing up. That's minus 90. Good. Make a little bit more space here. Um, now A is actually going to go to my left. So I'll click on that and point me to 180. S is going to make me go down. So point that to 90. And D is going to make me go right. So that'll be zero degrees. Good. So that'll get my chicken facing the way that I want it to go. But I also want it moving. So if I go to scratch blocks and grab move 10 steps, I want that to be move one step and I press the key. I put that underneath all of my point in direction blocks. So when I press the key, I'll point in a certain direction and then I'll move. Let's see. That looks right, very good. Let's see how that plays out. That was on step four, level four. Level four. So W, S, D, A, moving in all the directions, very good. And now I can get my chicken. Oh, got squished. Give it another try. Hopefully I'm more careful this time. Here we go chicken got its coin very good so that's step four now step five is uh, combining WASD with the arrow keys so you basically just want copies of those blocks step six is where you do a bit of debugging you can see that the code is a little messed up and you need to go and uh, make those arrow keys the inputs give the correct outputs fix some of those problems um, same thing with step seven. Now step eight, this is a good one. This is where we can start to use the mouse, mouse clicks to trigger events. So on step eight, we want this free gift button to trigger the free gift. So let's edit the script on that button. Now right now, empty, there's nothing here. We want to detect when the player presses this object. So if we go to events, and under mouse, we want to grab when the player presses myself. What do we want that to do? Well, the free gift is actually in the next level. So if we go to control flow and grab go to next level, connect that in there, play this. So that was level eight for the free gift. And if we click that button, we can see here's our free gift. What's inside? coins good job okay great so that is inputs and outputs um, our crossy road tutorial it covers um, it covers thinking algorithmically to solve problems sequencing instructions correctly and a little bit of debugging as well um, demonstrating that you can use inputs and outputs okay very good let's move on to number three loops and iteration so loops and iteration they are um, ways of repeating 
parts of your code. So steps that you might want to repeat a few times to achieve a goal without having to um, actually recreate that same code multiple times. Um, okay, let's go. Okay, so the first level in loops and iteration has our chicken with our coin there. And what we need to do is, um, this one's kind of similar to the first one that we did. We right click on our chicken and edit the code there. There's nothing in here. We want to tell our chicken to move up. How many times? One, two, three. Chicken, please move up three times. So we're going to say when the level starts, broadcast up we go to events and grab when the level starts and then from events again in that messaging section we want broadcast message up okay now uh, we want to do this three times so we can duplicate that block do it three times play that and this will get me to the coin but You'll see that worked but the issue is I've had to repeat this multiple times there's a much more efficient way we can do this if I get rid of these two blocks and if I say broadcast up I want you to repeat three times using a block from control flow repeat ten times repeat ten times I broadcast up uh, I only want to do that three times that's much more efficient And if we play level one, we can see move, move, move. Very good. So that's a little uh, example of how the repeat block works. Now in the next steps, we want to um, chain or combine these repeating blocks. So in step two, we need to move up twice and then left twice. So you could say, uh, Close the script here on level one, go to level two, edit that chicken. We want to say when the level starts and then from control flow, repeat two times and then another repeat two times. And the first one was up to and then left to. So we again are using that broadcast message block from events. Broadcast up two times so this happens when the level starts two times it will repeat broadcast up then two times it will repeat broadcast left let's play that and pick level two level two up up left left very good okay level three advanced looping so we need to um, essentially do what we did but add another uh, bunch of loops so up up left left up up um, so that's pretty straightforward now nested loops this is where things get interesting if we look here we can see the chicken goes up up left left up up left left up up left left and there we can see a pattern, right? Up, up, left, left. Well, that's looping up twice. And that's looping left twice. Well, sorry, repeating it. Um, so that would be two times up, two times left. But then this whole sequence here of two times up, two times left, that is also getting repeated two more times. So in total three times, we're going to be saying three times do two times up, two times left and it should look something like this when the level starts three times do the two times up and two times left sequence of movements so let's get that working on our chicken that's kind of diagram of the pattern there so with level three 
we want to say when the level starts and then we want to be broadcasting messages up and left um, up left up left up left and we need that repeat block from control flow repeat times now we know that we go up twice so repeat two times up and we also know that we repeat left two times so we go up up then left left and then we do that again for three repeats so control flow repeat 10 times change that to three times so for three repeats it's doing that and that okay let's play that level three Up, up, left, left, up, up, left. Was that level three? No, sorry, that was level four. So let's play that, level four. Level four. Right, I need to go back. I accidentally did that on level three, but that's okay. I can select that block, control C, go into level four, edit that chicken, control V. There's the code. Level four. Up, up, left, left, up, up, left, left, up, up, left, left. Very good. So nested loops. See how they're inside of each other? That means nested. Okay, next step. Multiple nested loops. So basically we're breaking we're breaking down the problem in level five. We can say, okay, chicken needs to get to that coin, that coin, that coin, that coin, and that coin. Well, to move to there and to move to there, that looks pretty much the same. Up, up, right, 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 up, up. Right, 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 right. So that's up, up, right, 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 times two. And then up, up, left, 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 times three. And you can see there's a little uh, picture of it there, the correct sequence. Okay, uh, let's have a look at step six. debugging nested loops so in step six we want to solve how the chicken works um, the code in here is not quite right if you play step six you can see the chicken doesn't quite know what it's doing whoops so you need to make it so that the chicken doesn't jump into that river so you need to tweak how some of these work you need to have a look at how you want the chicken to move that way then that way then that way then that way then that way right okay so up 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 right right down 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 up 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 right right down 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 up 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 right right down so that repeats so I'll leave you to figure that one out. Um, now, step seven, the forever loop, this one, um, instead of just saying repeat a certain amount of times, we're gonna say infinitely repeat to get our chicken to move around. So if we look at the, the, uh, the, the code that we would think that we would want the chicken doing is to go right, up, up, left, left, down, down, right. Um, so that it gets all four coins let's go and do that so we want to say when the level starts tell the chicken to move in that way and remember we're using the broadcast message block from message sending broadcast message we want to go right then we want to go up 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 then we want to go left 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 then we want to go down down so down down 
and then we want to go right again so this finishes up where it started now we've got some repetitions in here don't we so if we go to control flow and grab repeat uh, there's two repetitions so repeat two times for that we can throw that other one away left left and down down they're repetitions as well so we'll say repeat two times broadcast left and then down as well repeat two times broadcast down and then finally we want to go right so that will go right up up left left down down right and it should collect all four coins right that's what you'd think let's see what it does uh, that is step seven so go chicken go well the coins are coming back aren't they so we need to make our chicken keep grabbing all the coins the way that we can do that is by using a forever block and that will repeat things um, continuously as long as the program is running we go to control flow and under loops we want forever grab the forever loop put all of our blocks inside that forever loop and then run that when the level starts and this will say when the level starts just keep doing that stuff over and over and over and over and over again let's play that now to see that how that works level seven and then the chicken just keeps doing it very good okay now our final step in this uh, loops tutorial is to get the chicken to do a, a kind of a figure eight pattern where it goes up and down uh, in a kind of a figure eight loop um, now the problem is the chicken already has some code on it but it's not quite right so I'll leave that up to you to figure out how to fix it and let's take a look at the next tutorial so we're now down to the fourth one out of five we've we're now going to cover selection and if statements now selection and if statements that means selecting the code that you want to run by uh, checking if a condition is true we'll use basic selection logic in a program and then we'll debug some of our algorithms so let's go okay <clears throat> using if statements so if we look at our the code on our chicken we can see there's nothing in here except for some global true false blocks these are conditions that we can check and they're either true or false so is a car coming from the left that'll be true or false is a car coming from the right is a river directly in front of me is a coin ahead of me is a coin to my left or is a coin to my right so those conditions we can check to get our chicken to move around so um, the chicken will move every time the game says go and the game will be telling the chicken to go um, every half second ish so we want to go to events and grab when I receive message and the message is go G O lowercase okay then we want to check some conditions so these are the conditions we can check let's close our script and just have a look at our level so the, there's the coin the coin is ahead of me i need to move three steps so let's look at the chicken again when i receive go i'm going to ask if coin is ahead so if i go to control flow and grab that if do block connect it into when i receive go i'm going to ask if a coin is ahead so I'll right click on coin ahead and duplicate that connect it to the if block if coin ahead sorry that's coin to the left we don't want that one do we we want coin ahead if coin ahead what do we want to do we want to uh, move 
So we'll broadcast move from events. If we grab broadcast message, move. Okay, let's play the game now. And if there's a coin ahead of me, I should move. And that's for step one. Coin is ahead. Chicken moves. Perfect. Okay. Step two. Step two uses if else. So if we go to step two, edit our chicken script. Um, the if else is to check. Well, let's just have a look at our level first. Um, we'll move up to the coin, and we'll be facing the tree, but there will be a coin to our left. And then what we want to do then is probably turn and start moving to grab that coin. So let's edit our chicken script. Okay. So if there's a coin ahead, I'm, I'm moving. I'll get the first coin. But then I want to check, what about if there's a coin to my left? So the way we can do this with our if block is click on that little... Uh, properties icon there, and grab an else and drag it into the if. So if that's true, it's going to move. But if it's not true, we'll get it to do something else. We'll get it to check if there's a coin on the left and then turn. Okay, so we need another if block in there to ask if coin to the left. And there's our coin to the left block. So let's duplicate that and put it in the if block. And then we want to turn left. So we'll broadcast turn left. Play that now and see if the chicken responds properly. That's level one. Oh, sorry, that's uh, level two that we wanted to see. Level two. Good. Okay. Now, what do we have in step three? More coin conditions. Um, so we can see the other conditions we have, uh, there would then be a coin to our right. So that's the code you want to do. You want to then use more else ifs to check, well, what if there's a coin to my left? But then what if there's a coin to my right? So you can connect them together in that way. Um, let's jump ahead. Step four is debugging. So you essentially want to look at the code on step four and fix it using what you've learned in the previous steps. Step five is detecting the river. So if we look at the chicken script, we can see there are um, in global and local, we can see there are those variables for checking if there's a river um, in front. Um, and step six, rebuilding the logic. So in step six, we have the chicken, but it's lost its logic. So you have to go and take what you've learned and rebuild it, uh, rebuild it. And then in step seven, you want your chicken to be able to cross the river. Um, and you need to fix up some of this faulty logic using what you've learned about if, else, controls, and uh, checking these conditions. And step eight introduces uh, the waiting block. So by the end of this, you get a fairly big um, if, else, condition checking system going here. That checks, well, is there a car coming? Okay, I'll wait. But if there's not, then I'll check if there's a car coming from the right. If not, I'll check if there's a river. If not, I'll check if there's a coin ahead. If not, I'll turn left or I'll turn right. So all of these conditions combined get us um, a pretty thorough movement system working. Okay, so if you go through all of that, you will have learned um, basic selection logic and a little bit of debugging as well. Okay, so that's selection and if statements. Final tutorial in here is comparative operators. Um, and in there, you'll learn um, how to compare values to each other using comparative operators and how to use selection logic to make decisions and also how to debug 
So let's jump into that final one. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, comparative operators. We've got our chicken here. Um, let's play the game and see how the chicken behaves. Level one. What does the chicken do? Chicken does nothing. So we need the chicken to do something. So let's edit the code on our chicken in level one. Oh, of course, I needed to be pressing the up and left and down and right arrow keys. Let's give that another try. Okay. Uh, so, oh, whoops, I picked the wrong level. Level one. Left, right, up, down. So I can use my keyboard keys. Now see how it's keeping track of how many steps I've taken? There's how many coins I've got. There's also a train. So I've got to be careful. I don't get hit by the train. And there we go. I got the coins. So that's good. Um, now, what we want to do in here is figure out if the number of coins we've collected is enough to win the level. So if I look at my level here, how many coins do I have? One, two, three, four, five coins. So I want my chicken to say, if coins collected equals five, then win the game. And to do that, we want to use uh, our forever loop. Remember, we covered that in loops and iteration. So we'll go to events and grab when the level starts and drag that out here. Then we want to keep checking. Once the level starts, we want to keep checking. So we'll go to control flow and use that forever block, which lets us keep running code. And the code in there is going to say if coins collected equals five, then win the game. So we need an if block from control flow. If do, then we need an equals block. And because we're talking about comparative operators, that's in operators. And it's up the top there, that equals block. We can use to check if a number equals another number. So that's coins collected if it equals five. So if we go to operators again, grab that zero, change that to a five. What do we want to do if we got five coins? We want to broadcast you win, which will tell the game, hey, I should win because I've got five coins. So let's test that out. Uh, level one. Okay, so we'll go get the coins. Hopefully the train doesn't get me. There we go. Got all five coins and now I won because I was checking. I got enough coins. Very good, very good. Okay, let's move on to the next steps. Let's have a look about a uh, look at step two. Step two, we're gonna go grab these coins. A bit more traffic for us to deal with. Um, and we also want to check if our steps taken um, hasn't got to thirty. So. We want, oh, okay, so we want to see if we can use our steps. So if we play level two, level two, we can see we've got our step counter. Each time we take a step, we want to limit the player's steps to 30 steps, 30 steps to get all the coins. So let's have a look at that chicken. Um... We essentially, in each of these blocks, we want to check if our steps taken is not 30. Does not equal. So we'll go to control flow, grab an if, and go to operators, and grab an equals. Change that to does not equal. Um, and we want to say if steps taken does not equal 30, so that's from operators. Steps taken does not equal 30, then we want to go up. But if it does equal 30, so we want to say else, if it does, then we're going to say you lose, you got to 30 steps. 
Should have tried to stay under 30 steps. You lose. Okay. So that's how that should look. So that's changing that equals operator to a not equals. So if you do not have 30 steps, you'll go up. If you do have 30 steps, you'll lose. Then we want to do it for down, left, and right as well. So we can duplicate what we've got there for down, left, and right. And down, I don't want to go up. I want to go down. Left, I don't want to go left. Uh, sorry, I don't want to go up. I want to go left. So there we go. Make a bit more space here. And then right. I don't want to go up. I want to go right. Okay, very good. So let's play the game and see if we can stay under 30 steps. That was level 2. Oh, okay. I've got to try to limit my amount of steps, don't I? Easy, 24 steps. Now let's replay it just to see if we can hit that step limit. Level 2. What if I take a heap of steps? Uh-oh. I hit the limit, and I couldn't get that last coin. Good. Okay, so that's how to check if a number does not equal something. Now, what about greater than? Well, it's a pretty similar thing. Um, what we want to do is check if the, in level 3, if the chicken has gone, um, has gone too far down. So if the chicken goes too far down, we'll check. Is the chicken's Y position, its vertical position, down beyond this point, which is 512 pixels? And you can kind of see there that Y number, 512. Um, and it uses this block from operators. The equals block, except it changes to greater than. Um, so I'm not going to go over that. You can go through the steps there to see that. Then the same deal for less than, less than, um, checking if the, this is on the car, to get the car to see if it needs to then go, once it hits this point, the car is going to come back. So the car will check its own position and figure out if it needs to go back. If its X position reaches, as it moves along, you can actually see this car here as we move it along, X position, that number there, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And as the car gets to an X uh, less than zero, we want it to come back over to here so that the car loops again. Okay. And uh, there's the code there. Um, in that example, you're using a less than block. Okay, then in this example, we want to use a, a greater than block on the train for step five. We want the train to know um, how long has it been since the last train came. If it's been more than um, six seconds, we want the train to come again. So uh, that's using a greater than block. And um, then a couple of debugging steps, and then that is it. So let's do the train's timing, and then we'll wrap it up at that. Uh, where is the tra ah the track? Okay, the track makes trains come. So we we'll edit the script on the track. Now we want the track to say when the level starts. When the level starts check forever so remember that block is in control flow forever i want you to forever be checking if the train has uh, not come for over six seconds so we want an if block in that forever and then we want to know um, is something greater than so that's from operators we use that equals block greater than time since last train greater than and then from operators we want Put a six in there six seconds so if it's been more than six seconds we want the train to come again so from events 
we can grab that broadcast block and say send send train okay so that'll keep running and that's on level five see will a train come okay it looks like trains about to come there goes a train and then we wait one two three four five six next train should come and then again the train will keep coming every six seconds because of that code that we used uh, with a comparative operator check if a number is greater than another number and then to run an instruction so that is GameFruit's um, Learn to Code with Crossy Road tutorials covering um, all these different computational thinking concepts from algorithms and sequencing to inputs and outputs, loops and iteration, selection of statements, and comparative operators. Well, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to check out these tutorials in your own time. I know I went through those pretty quickly and skipped a bunch of stuff, but I wanted to try to keep it... Uh, so that it wasn't a really long stream. Um, so remember, you can go to gamefruit.com and then you want to go to tutorials and starter projects and coding with Crossy, and you can go through those on your own. All right. Well, I'll wrap the stream up here. Thank you guys for tuning in.